Hey everyone, welcome back. So I've actually been building up popular hammers for comparing to Volness Prime, to show why Volness Prime is underpowered and why DE needs to buff its stats more. While making all these builds, I came across an interesting setup for the Jatka tag. That was cool enough, it warranted its own video. It works quite well in my opinion, makes for a nice side grade. Jatka tag used to be pretty good, but with the changes to the system of how corrosive no longer full stripped armor, it kind of fell by the wayside. That's that when I took a closer look with all the new things that have been added to the game and the helmet system, actually it's even better than it was before. We got two frames showcasing the power of Kateg today, which means quite a lot of talking, so let's get started, shall we? First, Kateg itself. This is a hammer arch type with average swing speed. It actually has one of the lowest critical chances and simultaneously lowest status chances of any hammer in the game of relevancy. It struggles to stabilize even orange crits, and the status chance only slightly passes 100 at max combo. As a normal melee weapon, it does suffer somewhat. It has basically zero slash damage with a massive amount of impact. It also has low base damage for a hammer. This makes it extremely hard for it to kill anything with armor. This is your typical setup with Proton Snap being in the flex slot. Proton lets you have steady status at the start while also applying a DOT that can double dip with smites. At max combo, Proton still lets you close in on 200 status. Primed Fever Strike may give you more upfront damage, but because armor is a problem, Proton will give you much more consistent toxin status application over time. That said, the build is still lackluster and clearly begins to fall off against Drakar Manic Bombards. That means it will have slight issues in Steel Path non-endurance and really isn't viable in this sense for Endless. Slotting Shattering Impact is actually worse than Proton Snap here because your goal is to not have to hit them enough times to strip all their armor anyways, you want to kill them sooner than that. Alternatively, you could drop both the Smite and Proton to fit Prime Fever Strike and Shattering, but you will need quite a few hits until the stripped armor bonus surpasses the double dipping potential of the Bane. At this point, your TTK is quite bad. Finally, we have Kateg's Augment, Volcan Blitz. This does blast damage and AoE upon a kill, but also an additional 60% health damage. This works great against unarmored targets, but fails miserably against armored targets. But there is potential here, and that is what I'm going to show you today. You see, so long as we can strip AoE armor on demand, Vulcan Blitz works amazingly well, assuming he can actually kill off the enemy. In this sense, it acts like a mini marked for death without having to subsume it. This is where our first frame comes in. This is a, a simple Ember build focused around max drain efficiency calcs with 190 efficiency and at least 40 duration. We are at only 2.5 drain on immolation. This means you can comfortably sit at it on max before the ramping drain really becomes a problem. Growing power pushes us up to 105 strength, which is enough to get you 89% damage reduction on immolation, and you can always stop the drain by casting Fire Blast. Fire Blast is also key to the kit because this is where we're going to get our 100% AoE armor strip. It does require line of sight, which is the limitation of our first drain. The full strip requires at least 100% strength, which we will again reach with growing power. As the build is reliant on Fire Blast usage to fuel our weapon, we are going to run both Natural Talent and Speed Drift for the fastest cast possible. Alternatively, you can drop Speed Drift for Rolling Guard if you want. Prime Sure Footed isn't mandatory, but nice to have because we will be using the Epitaph as a primer on this setup, which has Self Stagger. Prime Flow and Preparation means you can use this build straight out of the box and you don't really need any setup. Finally, we have 175 range. Not only is this to fuel Fire Blast Armor Strip, but actually we infuse and snare over her one. This extra range allows us to pull everything in better to be hit by Vulcan Blitz, which only has a 6 meter radius. The nice part about Vulcan Blitz is it activates on every single kill. You don't have to kill a specific enemy like Mark for Death requires. So long as you kill the enemy and spread viral, it should be enough to nuke the crowd. For Arcanes, we've opted for Energize if for some reason you have energy issues. You really don't need it though. The other Arcane is whatever and I've just opted for Arcane Strike for faster Kateg rotations. Now if you remembered, I mentioned bringing Epitaph as our primer. Why Epitaph and not Nucor? Well, Nucor has an enemy chaining limit, and Snare with this much range on Steel Path can actually draw in an excessive amount of enemies, which is what we want on this build. We also don't want every status stacked for our damage. Some Viral Stacks and a few other statuses is more than enough. Epitaph reaches a 13.28 meter radius on its status AoE with Prime Fulmination and has no enemy limit, meaning it can easily prime 20 even 30 plus enemies instantly so long as they are within the radius and they will all die to this setup. That is why we are running Prime Sure Footed as well, because 13 meter radius is no laughing matter. This is essentially a blast viral setup with innate cold procs. It has extended status duration to make cleanup easier as well as making that mandatory prime fulmination to get the most out of it without staggering yourself. 
If you bring a Panzer as your pet, you can spread Varl all over the map. This makes Epitaph less important because you only need a single Varl stack of the enemies around your target. This means you can go back to using new core or even take a Cedo so you can bring Bronco or Zacti Prime to open enemies to finishers without having to rely on Aramont's executing dash. That will give you the option to run Zenerik or Vazarin if you so choose. That said, for this video, we'll be sticking to Epitaph and Aramont for simplicity's sake. Finally, let's take a look at our Kateg again. We'll be using this build instead. You'll notice I slotted Finishing Touch and this is because we're actually going a finisher build. Because we are already priming the crowd anyways, it only makes sense to bring Condition Overload to make sure we one-shot the first enemy in the chain reaction. Because we're on Aramon, the melee will naturally reach 12x combo at some point. With Blood Rush, this allows Kateg to finally pass 100% CC, stabilizing our finisher damage. This literally is the only mod that can reliably get you 2x damage as the flex slot on the build. I'm going full corrosive to deal with heavy gunners and for the low possibility to strip armor. Radiation works better for bombards, but the status itself is useless here. Prime Fury for faster finishes in the animation, as well as our mandatory Bane. To benchmark this first test, I'm going to use the toughest enemies available. Drake Harmonic Bombard spawned at level 150. These enemies are nice in that they are immune to CC effects and makes testing easier since they cannot be ragdolled. They also have one of the highest base armor ratings in the game and excessive base HP. It will showcase the full finisher damage potential of the build. At level 150, these things are actually tankier than Eidolon Synovias. So to get this test started, I'm going to cast my 2 to get my heat bar active. You can pretty much leave it permanently up for the rest of the mission. Now we'll spam our 4 a few times to get the rate gain up. Just look at the floor and aim away. It uses line of sight, so if there are no enemies you can see, it will not consume any energy, but it will still add to the heat meter rate gain. You can only full strip enemies with a full bar with growing power procced, and each time you strip it will drop pack to half. This is why we want a high rate gain so it's always ready on demand. Over time, using your 3 will slowly drop the rate gain, and eventually you will have to cast your 4 a few times again to get it back up. Keeping your bar max will steadily increase the drain rate, so make sure you do use your 3 from time to time even if you don't need it. This will reset the drain growth the next time your heat meter maxes out. Because we're only running 80% strength, you will need to proc growing power to pass 100%, which is required for the 100% armor strip before you cast Fire Blast. This strategy requires priming for damage anyways, so it should flow very naturally into your playstyle. Time to get into the setup, which is honestly very simple. When your meter is maxed out, cast your ensnare at crowd. Prime them with your epitaph whenever afterwards and immediately cast your fire blast. Void dash through the crowd and then finish your one of them. If your Vral stacks somehow wore off, you can still reshoot your epitaph again before you stab them. This should one-shot the enemy and result in viral field 6 meter explosion. It does 60% HP damage, and because they're also proc with viral and fully armor stripped, it should one-shot all of them since viral gives you an instant 100% damage bonus. You can head on to the next group of enemies, cast your ensnare, prime, fire blast, dash, backstab. Rinse and repeat as needed. It should only take a few seconds to clean up. You shouldn't have any energy problems as you're running 190 efficiency for your drain calcs on your embolation and 40% duration, which is all you need. Your fire blast combined with ensnare should keep enemies at bay and also minimize your incoming damage. Remember, immolation still gives you 90% damage reduction. If you want to do this in endurance, I would recommend dropping speed drift for rolling guard as that is your flex slot. If you're just running ordinary missions, you don't even need Blood Rush crits to kill on finishers. You can instead just offer for healing return as every enemy that dies from the explosion will be primed anyways, keeping you at full health easily and the enemies won't be strong enough to one-shot you regardless. Now let's take a look at another frame that can run this kind of setup, Zaku. A slightly more interesting setup than Ember, Zaku retains its guns from Grasp of Locke in this build. He needs more strength than Ember, 200, so efficiency has taken a little bit of a hit. Duration is also important to keep his armor strip ability up. So we have opted for Arcane Energize Mandatory in this particular setup as it has much more activity than Ember. Growing power is used to once again to enable you to reach 200% strength for full strip on Gaze. The high range build also gives Gaze massive coverage they can always come back to. You can even cast and snare and reuse the old Gaze target meaning you will always have a reliable area to come back to. Natural talent is present due to Gaze's longer cast on and helping in snare a bit. Prime Flow is needed because the build is very energy hungry. Finally, Prime Sure Footed again is to resist Epitaph's 13 meter AoE self stagger. I've chosen Subsume, Snare over as one, Zad as Whisper because it provides nothing to this setup. Vast and Time can be used to have near indefinite uptime on Gaze's zones while also letting you even maintain Zaku's Grass Block permanently active despite only having 100 efficiency. This means Zaku has even more firepower than Ember on this build. Zaku's rotation doesn't require the heat meter setup like Ember, but still ends up being a bit more complicated. You still need to find a target to ensnare, 
Then you can prime the enemy with Epitaph, which will also proc growing power and randomly gaze anything in it. Feel free to cast Grasp Lock to steal all of their weapons here. Then you can use your finisher on them to blow them all up. Once again, this should die to a condition overload powered finisher, and then the surrounding enemy should die to the 60% health damage that's scaled with your viral procs. Maintaining usage of your vast in time will let you recycle the sprinklers of death near your choke points with gaze. High range ensures you still get full use out of Ensnare and the persistent gaze strip Auras, making up for the less radii than Ember's Fire Blast and requirement of actually having an enemy to cast your gaze on, unlike Fire Blast's instant strip. So now we've come to the end. I've actually had a great amount of fun playing with this. While Kateg is rather lacking as a normal melee weapon, it is monstrous in an armor strip setup being able to nuke anything. It literally can function as a replacement for Mark for Death in this sense. And all Rivenless too. The Riven doesn't even make much of a difference, except possibly guaranteeing you kill the first enemy. The best part about this build is you don't have to worry about killing an enemy you cast Mark for Death on. Anything you kill with Kateg can trigger Vulcan Blitz. In crowded areas, which Ensnare produces, this lets Vulcan Blitz shine where Mark for Death would otherwise struggle to find which enemy you needed to kill to trigger the AoE. It breathes a little bit of life back into Ember builds without making her just the Fire Blast Subsume bot and another playstyle for Zaku once again. You could in theory do this with a 400% strength Hildren build too, but that requires either a Nidus Spectre or cooperating teammates, and we know how hard that is. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering the Tempest story. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you the info first out once the Sisters of Parvo's mainline drops. Don't want to miss out on Day 1 Yorelli content, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.